Welcome back. Now with just two days to go until the Paralympics opening ceremony, you can feel the excitement in the air once again as we wait to see how the GB team is going to perform. And watching them uh, very closely will, will be one of our greatest Paralympians of all time, Baroness Tani Gray-Thompson. We'll be chatting in a moment. First, though, here's a look back at some of her incredible achievements. Born with spina bifida, wheelchair racer Tani Gray Thompson really made her name when she won four gold medals at the Barcelona Games in 1992. In Atlanta, four years later, she came home with three silvers and a gold. And in Sydney 2000, she was unstoppable, repeating her Barcelona success with another four golds. Tani had become a true sporting legend. At the age of 35, she took her Paralympic gold medal tally to 11 when she came first in the 100 and 400 metres in Athens. When she finally retired in 2007, with 16 Paralympic medals under her belt and an astonishing 30 world records broken, Tani Gray Thompson had more than earned her place in history as one of our greatest Paralympians. Baroness Gray Thompson is here. Do you still have a little giggle at the title? I do. It's it's lovely, but it is slightly strange, especially in work where they call me Milady. Do they, do they really call yeah, you Milady? Yeah, the stuff. It's brilliant. It's really great, though. Oh. Oh, I think that'd be quite nice here, actually. I'll have to get them to start <laughs> calling me my lady. It was uh, fascinating, actually, watching you uh, watch that little film there. Uh, you look quite choked up, really. It's kind of weird sort of seeing my career sort of summed up in, in that way, you know. When I, I started competing at the age of 12. Knew I wanted to compete, but sort of didn't know where my career would take me. And, you know, five games later, uh, 16 medals. And it, it just, it's such a privilege c to compete for GB because so few people get to do it out of everyone who tries. And then to win medals as well was just amazing. Oh, it's just incredible. I mean, 11 gold medals, four silver, one bronze. You've broken 30 world records. You've won six marathons. Amazing, amazing achievement. When, did, when was there that moment where you realised that you had really something very special to offer in sport? Um, I played a lot of sports until sort of the age of 14, 15. Knew that wheelchair racing was the one that I wanted to concentrate on. Uh, and in my last year as a junior, I won the national title. Uh, and I think it was one of the first races I won. But by then I was training and, you know, I was in, in a club with a good coach. And it all just went there, sort of, you know, sort of increments, really. Um, and Seoul was my first Paralympics. And I knew absolutely then in Seoul that I wanted to get better. I, I won a bronze. I wanted to do more than that. And, uh, you know, my husband was an athlete. He was also my coach. So it was kind of all in the family, really. And how driven do you have to be? Um, <laughs> okay, I'll rephrase that. How driven were you? Um, obsessive, absolutely. So um, our wedding was based around my competition schedule. The birth of my daughter was. Um, literally, we counted back sort of six months, which I figured I'd need to get back into sort of peak shape. Counted back 40 weeks and said, right, that's, that's the date I need to be pregnant by. So, <laughs> um, so, so obsessive. I'm, I'm much more relaxed about life now that I'm not competing. Yeah, and how do you feel about the fact that, you know, we're seeing the stories this week in the papers that the Paralympics is almost sold out. How does that make you feel, Tani? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the reality is that at previous games, you know, a lot of tickets have been sold, but in Beijing a lot were given away. Uh, and halfway through the Olympics, I tweeted, right, come on, guys, let's make the Paralympics a sellout. And within minutes, hundreds of people were coming back saying, you tell me to buy tickets and I can't. Um, and, and that's fantastic because it's great for the athletes knowing that the people there are there because they've paid for a ticket and the crowd support I think will just be phenomenal for the British athletes. It is unfortunate isn't it that the, the other story in the papers this week is that some disabled people have found that they've had to use a high tariff phone line to book their tickets mm. rather than like able-bodied people free on the internet. Mm. Is that a bit disappointing to see that with 48 hours to go? I mean it's unfortunate isn't it? It is. I think the reason that people were directed to a phone line is because everyone's got quite different needs. So some people like me need a wheelchair space, some need an end of aisle seat. And I think it was felt that it'd be easier if people wanted to buy tickets, had somebody to talk to. Um, I think the other thing that some people are being frustrated by is just the fact that they've not been able to buy tickets. And it's not because there's any discrimination. It's just there are no tickets left for, for some of those sessions. So um, I, I think it's been sort of quite difficult. I think people's sort of expectations have been raised because they want to come to the games so tell us who should we be looking out for in your opinion oh right um in wheelchair racing uh dave weir uh he's going for four medals uh he's incredible he won two goals in beijing um 
personal interest here, Jay Jones, who my husband coaches. She's 16. She's the youngest member of the GB Athletics team. She is fantastic. Uh, she's actually racing in my old racing chair. Is she really? Yeah, and it's, oh, it's kind amazing. of the fastest it's ever gone, I think. <laughs> so uh, she's great. And then, you know, you look at other sports, Ellie Simmons, um, you know, Lee Pearson in Equestrian. Um, yeah, Ali's going to be incredible. I think she's just topped the pole for the athlete that people most want to watch at the Paralympics. So she beat Oscar Gosh, Pistorius. She has actually topped That's that fantastic. pole, I think, as well. And we'll we'll get to know and really love these characters, won't we? And hear the stories, you know, behind their disability as well. Which hopefully, I mean, do you hope attitudes will change? Because obviously, you're in the Lords now, and I know you campaign tirelessly. To, to get disabled people treated, you know, equally in the mm. way they should be treated. Yeah, that's quite a contrast, isn't it, to your sporting world, but one one you really love. It is, because I think the nation are very proud of our Paralympians, and that's one portrayal of disabled people. But for a lot of disabled people, the reality is a long way from that. And there is still some discrimination, and it is very challenging out there. Um, and I think what the Paralympics can do, you know, ultimately it's about one person winning and everyone else not but it can open people's minds to what you can do if you're disabled. And actually, you know, everyone's somewhere along a line and we should just be a little bit nicer to everybody, I think. And you love being in the Lords, don't you? It's an amazing place to be. Um, I share an office with uh, an ex-actor, a film director and a general in the British Army. Uh, and it, it's just, it's a place where if you work hard, you can make a difference. And, and that's why I love it. Well, I know you work hard. You're off to Heathrow soon to, what are you doing at Heathrow? Uh, I'm going out to Heathrow today to meet the games makers, the volunteers who've been at the airport for weeks, you know, welcoming every team in. Oh, and just to kind of go and say thank you for what they do. Oh, thank you very much, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know you'll, uh, you'll have a lot of fun watching it and commentating on the games. Thank you, Tanny. Thank you. Well, still to come between now and 9.25, we've got The Man Dreams Are Made Of, George Clooney. Tonight, the hottest ticket around is dinner.